So to start off with, let's just start thinking about some of the different construction systems that we might find uh, on a job site, but also on the exam. Uh, a couple of different uh, wall types that we can use as part of our discussion. Uh, the first one is obviously a frame uh, construction. Uh, frame meaning uh, it's a system with uh, wood joists, wood studs, uh, and sometimes that'll, you'll see that referred to as platform construction. That's a particular kind of frame construction as opposed to balloon frame. Uh, and sometimes you'll hear people refer to it as stick built. So uh, all of those are different ways of talking about uh, using these fairly simple uh, dimensional lumber systems uh, that if you need to go span farther, you could be using engineered lumber, et cetera. There's a number of different sort of manipulations you could do to it. But essentially, it's a fairly simple, straightforward thing that uh, a few carpenters can actually put together uh, in, in, a, in short, uh, quick succession. Um, the sort of basic numbers are, are sort of straightforward. The studs and, and joists tend to be on a, a spacing of 16 inches, uh, could be up to 24 inches, um, but likely to be a number that is divisible into 48 inches because of the size of plywood. Um, and the spanning capacity might be anywhere from, uh, say, a 12 foot span to a, a 17 or 18 foot span. If you have the right species of wood and the right grading of the wood, uh, you could probably get up to about 18 feet. Uh, this is a very simple, straightforward system. One of the great things about wood frame construction is if things aren't quite right, if you're at the edge of the construction and you're measuring out the, the uh, foundation and the foundation turns out is uh, an inch too long, you know, you can just push the stud over a little bit. You bang it with a hammer or whatever it is you gotta do, you can make that work. It's a, it has enough looseness in it that uh, it's, a, it's very flexible and, and reasonable. Uh, the other kind of interesting thing about frame construction is that it's all structural, so there's a million little tiny bits of structure. So if any one of them is not really quite up to it, if there's a piece of wood that rots out or there's something that um, has, a, has a problem one, one type or another, uh, or you have to cut something out to be able to put um, a cabinet in or something, uh, it doesn't really matter that much because there's all of this overbuiltness that it's everything is sort of a little bit of structure all over the place. And so that gives a, a, a lot of freedom. It, it makes it very easy to adapt later. It makes it very simple to uh, cut into and to, uh, to reconfigure in, in lots of uh, different ways. So frame construction, very, very useful in that sort of low key, simple, straightforward, uh, lots of flexibility kind of way. Some of the downsides to the frame obviously are uh, wood construction is potentially, uh, it adds fuel to a fire. Uh, it can only be so strong, uh, so it's only so robust. Um, there's a limitation on height because of that. Uh, so there's a you know, series of problems with it that uh, you can only span so far until you start getting into more serious engineered lumbers. Um, uh, but the sort of simplicity, perfect for the right job, right? Single family houses, uh, small scale residential, small commercial. Um, you wouldn't want to use frame construction for something like a, a hospital um, because the fire issues and the sort of uh, integrity issues are, are probably not so great comparatively. But uh, it's exactly the right choice for, for other choices. So let's look at the one next to it. It's, uh, this is a, a masonry wall. You can see that we've got uh, brick uh, and then a CMU backup uh, right up next to it. So this is uh, one continuous solid element of masonry. Um, that's the sort of an unusual wall these days. There are places where people do it, and there's reasons why you might do it. For one is uh, you might have some size limitation issues. You, need, uh, you don't have any more room than you're trying to uh, get as much structural capacity out of the masonry as you possibly can. But one of the troubles with this type of wall, which is referred to as a barrier wall, uh, one of the troubles with this type of wall is in a rainstorm, uh, as that rain is kind of coming across and the bricks are getting soaked and the water is sort of penetrating through the brick, and the, most brick and most blocks are actually uh, pretty absorbent, and so they will get soaked pretty, pretty easily that that uh, soaking will just sort of keep finding its way all the way right through that wall until eventually you're getting uh, moisture levels into the space 
uh, through evaporation, uh, or you might be getting uh, drips down, condensation down, and uh, problems with uh, uh, mold and other kinds of moisture issues. So the barrier walls uh, are much more structurally robust. They're very, very sturdy, um, but uh, have, have sort of certain kinds of problems. So typically these days, not all the time, but typically instead of doing a barrier wall, most of the time you'll find uh, that the uh, masonry is being used in more of a veneer setting. So in this particular case, the veneer, I have a front veneer of uh, brick masonry and then a back, uh, backup wall of CMU, of concrete masonry units. So that makes this wall thicker than the barrier wall. Uh, and what it has there is that gap in the middle. So what's going on with the gap? Well, in that same rainstorm, as that rain is coming down and it's soaking uh, that masonry, instead of that uh, moisture finding its way to the backup wall, there's this air gap there now. So that moisture just falls down that back face of that first uh, brick veneer. Uh, that air gap acts as a, uh, essentially a pressure equalization chamber. So the, as the pressure, uh, air pressures and the water pressures are pushing that moisture through that first level of brick, that first veneer of brick, when it gets to that air gap, the air uh, in that spot becomes a place where the pressure gets lost. And so it can't, the moisture can't leap across uh, the, that uh, cavity, uh, so it just sort of falls down to the bottom of the cavity at which point we can uh, safely flash and get rid of it out uh, through the bottom. So it's a way of controlling the amount of moisture. Uh, now we weren't particularly worried on the moisture uh, on the frame, and that was because the frame is set up for any number of different kinds of siding. We can have wood siding, we have vinyl siding, we can have uh, metal sidings, all kinds of different systems that are set up for, for how to shed that. And that system of the cladding system becomes something that uh, is added onto the, the structural frame, so it's a separate element. The thing about the two masonry, the barrier and the veneer masonry, is that the uh, structural system itself, the masonry itself, is in fact the cladding, and so it has to do both the structural work and uh, shedding of all the rainwater and whatever else from the exterior. Uh, so very quickly, just even at a first glance, we can start seeing how there are places where I'm going to want to choose one over another. Uh, there's going to be uh, reasons why I would be more attuned to the structural robustness of uh, the solid masonry walls. But there's going to be situations where I really just want something light and easy and airy. Let's look at a couple of other ones.